The long wait is finally over. The offseason has come and gone. The draft has come and gone. Free agency signings have come and gone. The 2023 Titans season has arrived. We're going to jump right into all things Titans, all things week one, all things NFL. This is a great show. You're not going to want to miss it. Sammy, start me up. Turn up your volume. Your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. Talking Titans. Ladies and gentlemen, 94 yards. Touchdown, Titans. He is the baddest man in the NFL. And he just took her to the house. The sickest Tennessee Titans podcast. Sick! It's going to be sick. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Sick Podcast, Talking Titans. Fellas, the moment has finally arrived. Jarrett Vin, how we feeling? Week one is around the corner. It's game week, baby. Wear my icy white. I can't wait to uh, rock out the icy whites with the Titans this weekend, and I'm so damn excited to talk Titans football. I left, I left my uh, taco meat out for Jarrett see, tonight. I know we see that. I always you know, love it when you have the taco meat sticking out. Yep, yep. I know you like that, but let's let's dive into it, as Sal likes to say. You know, no more talking yes. about my talk. You know what? For once, out of like a billion shows that we've done so far, I'm going to do this now because I always forget. I always do it at the end. Guys, if you're watching this right now, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, share the show with your friends. Um, we're really new in this space, and we're doing great things at a really fast pace, and we're really appreciative of all the help that we're getting from you guys, subscribing and whatnot. So, Make sure you keep that up for us. Thumbs up the show. Make sure, you know, uh, everyone who wants to see it can see it. And uh, we're going to keep this train rolling. Um, moving forward from that, before we jump into our topics today, I want to bring something up. We kind of have a little bit of a schedule that we're going to try to uh, concrete here for you guys so everyone knows what they're getting into each week. You can see up here, we're going to do our normal show Wednesdays. Um, Fridays, we're going to do a show with whatever team that we're facing. Uh, obviously, sick podcast. Hopefully, if not, we'll, we'll bring someone in um, as well. And then every Sunday after the game, we're going to go live, take questions, uh, and, and hopefully uh, celebrate a lot together. But if not, also uh, be down in the dumps together as well. Uh, we will so do that it was live. Gonna... I'll write yeah. it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be our schedule. Just so everybody knows, if anything were to change, obviously we'll let you guys uh, know and you know as things happen. But that's what we're going to be doing moving forward. So keep an eye out uh, on those three days. So let's dive right into this week's show. It is week one. It is here. It is Titans versus the Saints uh, on the road. Um, you know, we all have done our predictions for the score and the outcome. We'll get into that later. But let's just start off, fellas. Um, you know, what are your outlooks on this game? Uh, where do you think the Titans are going to succeed? Where do you think they might have some trouble and vice versa? And uh, overall, where do you think this game finishes up? Vin, why don't you start us off? Uh, I think this is going to be a close game. I can see this being a game where, although it is week one, Vegas usually is pretty on point. Could be a game where Vegas um, pins it right on the dot, um, where unfortunately we would be losing by three points. But I also see Vegas thinking that this is a pretty evenly matched game. You know, usually – the home team gives the away team a three-point um, swing just because they're home. And if it's no more than that, then that means Vegas thinks that both teams are pretty evenly matched. And I think it's an accurate spread. Uh, we're on the road. I think Vegas thinks each team is pretty um, relatively up in the air as regards to how their season may go. There's a lot of doubters on the Titans side. There's a lot of people who think we could do well. Two. And then I think the same thing goes for the Saints. I think there's a lot of people who think Derek Carr is an above average quarterback who is in a division that is pretty weak and they have some talent there and they can make some noise. Then there's some people who think that Derek Carr is is overrated as he I think he's always been. Um, they're a team that lacks talent around them. Uh, Kamara is going to be out for a few games. Michael Thomas is just coming back after what seems like forever. Um, and they have a lot of question marks on their team. It's a um, second-year head coach. So I think it's a pretty um, evenly matched game. I think that's what Vegas thinks. I believe that as well. Um, but I'm going to go with the Tennessee Titans. I think Derek Carr has always been prone to a few more mistakes, more than Ryan Tannehill has. I think our defensive line is going to get to him early and often. We're going to force some turnovers. 
I think we're not going to allow them to get into a rhythm. I think we're going to do what we do, run the ball, keep them off the field, a long drive, hopefully that um, result in seven points and not three. Um, but I think it's going to be a close game that I now think, you know, I know we did our predictions a while ago. I originally had us losing this game. But now I think it's a game that we're going to pull out on the road. And um, come the end of the year, this game could end up being um, <clears throat> pretty pivotal when it comes to the division ranking. So I think Tennessee is going to win this game. I think they do it by, you know, around the margin of a touchdown or so. Derek? Yeah, I think uh, I think we're gonna uh, come in with our stormy whites, our stormtrooper look. That's why we mean business when we when we go there. It's a business trip. Week one, uh, I know I, I always say September is not really you know meant for you know to look at the records because you can come out of September two and two and you think your your team is shit and it's really not. But just diving into the um, depth chart over here for the Saints, yeah, they have Michael Thomas who's barely healthy right now and Chris Olave. We gotta we gotta handle. But Alvin Kamara not being on this team that that brings Jamar Jamar Jamal Williams and and um, what is it? I got a rookie. Yeah, Miller. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think our defensive front is de- definitely going to be fine, especially that shaky offensive line. You know, Dennis Kelly's a second year um, head coach. He's coached with Derek Carr, but Derek Carr has given us fits when he was in Oakland slash Las Vegas. So that's a little that's a little worrisome for me. Um, especially when he has weapons. He has a weapon like Dwan, uh, Juan Johnson that comes off as tight end. He acts like a Darren Waller type. Uh, person to me so if we contain him with like McCreary or or Molden or even uh Bayard coming down off playing safety and almost playing man-to-man with him I think we're going to totally be fine especially with the pressure coming off the edge with the, with our rotation defensively I think we're fine with them it's the offense that work kind of worries me believe it or not going in here we don't know the full health of, of Traylon Burks even though he practiced today and he said uh we'll see in the in a, a little press conference in, in the locker room they have they have a pretty decent secondary with Tyron Matthew and Marcus May and uh, Marquise Lattimore, you know, those are three guys right there in the secondary that can cause fits for Ryan Tannehill and, and DeAndre Hopkins and Chig and everybody like that. So if we have one-on-one matchups possibly with the, our linebackers with Chig, I think he's going to be a pretty good focal point in this offense, and especially getting Derrick Henry and Tajay Spears out in the flat and making Tajay Spears, you know, try to beat the linebackers. But, you know, up front they have Cameron Jordan, who is always, you know, Cameron Jordan. He, you know, he's a great defensive lineman. But the person you have to watch out for, and I was listening to Aaron Brewer, is Nathan uh, Shepard. He came over from um, Kansas City. He's a nose tackle. And it seems to me that when Brewer was talking, they have full focus on him because he can cause havoc and, and clog holes. So if we contain them on the defensive front, I think, I think like Vince said, a touchdown wins this game. Mm, yeah, listen – uh, gun to my head, Traylon Burks is playing. Okay, number as one. Of what, as of what we saw, yeah. I mean, listen, he was a full participant at practice. I mean, he didn't even say limited on the fucking sheet. So in my mind, if he's a full participant at practice, uh, and you know he's not a very good liar. So during that interview, everyone saw it looked yeah. like he was trying to make it look like he wasn't playing or make it sound like there was a chance he wasn't. Uh, but I think the guy's going to play. And if he does, that is a absolute game changer for us because um, that's our full potential offensively with him in the lineup. Outside of that, I mean, yeah. No Kyle knee Phillips, brace to practice either. No knee brace. Obviously, that's great. Um, Kyle Phillips is supposed to be part of this offense. He's not going to be around. But outside of that, if Traylon plays, then we're going in guns blazing. That's obviously excellent, excellent news. Um, uh, Vin, you probably touched on or Jared, I'm not sure. Uh, we gotta, we got to take care of that young tight end of theirs. He's really good. And uh, young tight ends typically, well, not even young, all tight ends typically have their way with us. So uh, that's something we need to key on as well. Um, you know, obviously we don't wish injury on anyone, but Alvin Kamara being out is absolutely massive. It takes a dimension out of their offense. Um, and, you know, I don't know what you're going to get on Michael Thomas. I think technically he's still questionable. I'm not even sure if he's 100% playing. Well, yeah, do we have the um, injury report up there. Throw up the injury report. See what we got. Yeah, it looked pretty damn good uh, from the little bit I looked at it. Uh, yeah, tr- Landry, you know, abdomen. Uh, okay. Uh, didn't even know anything about that, but I don't think that's anything too crazy. Um, Arden Key. Yeah, everyone full, full, full. Yeah, listen. <laughs> Obviously, we know damn well not to get used to this. Um, but you know, oh, maybe, maybe let's not put uh, it out there. Listen, I'm not, I'm not, I can't, hope. if anything, I'm reverse jinxing it. So I don't really need to knock on one, but, um, history has a uh, history would make us believe not to get used to, it, but I hope we can, obviously injury has been the biggest concern of this team for half a decade. Now it's held us back so many freaking times now. And at some point something's got to give and let's hope this is the year, but, yes. um, I think we're, I honestly, 
each night I go to sleep, I wake up thinking we are going to play even better and better than the day before. I think we're going to come out guns blazing. Uh, obviously, the first two, technically you can even say three weeks in the NFL, are an absolute coin flip outside of the elite power five, six teams in the NFL. Nobody performs the way everyone thinks they're going to start off, whether that be better or worse than they're predicted. So, Yeah, I mean, uh, the, um, the Bears beat the Niners week one last year. The Bears yeah. had the first pick. Shout out Adam Rank. And I the, mean, that was that was an, uh, I, I I know, know, but I'm, to, an absolute. To prove ja- uh, Sal's point, um, you know, it's a crapshoot. You know, the, the Niners ended up a game away from the Super Bowl. The Bears had the number one pick. You know, be that as you may, it was awful weather. But I think there's a lot of uh, – Teams catching up to speed in the first three weeks, like Sal said. Yeah, so. didn't the Chiefs start out like three and three, something like that, last year? Something like they were, they were like they didn't, they weren't, they weren't anything that we thought they were going to. I could be wrong, but regardless, um, I, I'm feeling really good about the way this offense is going to look. Honestly, uh, I, I, I just, I, I got a lot of confidence in Mr. Kelly, uh, and I think he has his head on right. And again, I've said it a million times. It's so obvious and easy to know what not to do. We saw it firsthand for the past two years at Downing. Um, all he's got to do is mirror, or you know, uh, do the exact opposite of that, and it can only be better. It can't get any worse. So uh, I'm so excited to see how they they use these new guys like Spears and and, and Aconco taking the next step. And it's gonna be really exciting. But I, I'm feeling really confident about this game. And and uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how it shapes up. But um, moving far from that, I, I got to bring this up, and we got a graphic to show you, Sam. Obviously, you're going to put it up for us. There were some predictions for um, the playoff teams this year, and I think it's ironic that <laughs> – so the Titans win back-to-back AFC South championships, and then on the third year after that, it's the Colts that are out of nowhere, and they're the team to beat, and watch out for them. One year, the fucking Jags win seven games in a row, and the Titans lose we, seven games in a row. And we gift them the division. We gift them the division, and now it's Jag City, and it's Duval County everywhere. I just think that's hysterical. Now, I love that, but I think it's ironic. What do you think, Jared? Oh, we are keeping every goddamn receipt. I booked Mark so many tweets, this one included, because everyone is on the Jags. What makes the Jags a better team than us? I, I, I followed well, somebody on Twitter the other day. What makes the Jags t- a quarterback? They got They have well. They have an argument. Jared. They have an argument. What, what, what's the argument? All right, let's so let's have, have a little they, discussion. They, they, they have a better quarterback. It's not even they a question. The, that's it. Not even a question. No, no, no. Hold on. The un the unproven offensive line. I'll give you because they're the okay. offensive line. After hearing uh, okay. Brewer talk, I I think they are full go and they're a hundred percent because he's okay. ready to kick ass in that interview. They have me. they have a more proven receiving core. Proven. Not saying higher ceiling, but they have a more proven receiving core. We have one guy on our roster that is proven in the NFL. Nobody else. They have multiple guys. That's number two. They get a pretty damn good tight end um, that's gotten tr- three times better than the t- last team he was on. Um, their defense, I think, meets us at eye level. Okay, meet, What, meet, what I, have they added since last year? And we almost beat them it, it, uh, for that playoff game. If it wasn't for that gift for uh, fumble recovery, what yeah, is they? I mean, what have they added? I think maybe maybe you can give us the edge as far as uh, backfield secondary, but I think their pass rush is pretty fucking good. Um, I think their linebacking core is pretty damn good, um, and obviously, like we said, their offensive line technically on paper is is a more in sync unit because they played longer. But um, you know, I I don't think they should be just handed the division now. Absolutely not. You can definitely make an argument that if nothing else, they are tied as the best team in the AFC South. And I think it's a two game race the way it looks now, but not to throw shade at our boy. I love Rabel as much as the next guy, Doug Peterson, in my opinion, is a top three to five head coach in this league. He won a Super Bowl with a team who never won it before. The next year he took them back to the divisional round where if all Sean Jeffrey doesn't drop that pair, they would have went to the NFC title game. His first year with the Jags, say what you want, we fell apart. But guess what? He also kept them motivated throughout the course of that year where a team could easily look forward to the upcoming draft and picking as high as possible. Yeah, a 2% them. chance to win yeah. after like week eight. Exactly. He kept them motivated. And I think there's a lot to say to, um, to that. So 
I love Rabel to death, but as far as resumes go, Doug Peterson has one of the best uh, in the league when it comes to NFL head coaches. So I'll even give them the coaching advantage. But that being said, they also needed us to be playing with our third string quarterback, and they barely uh, won that game. And I'll still go to my grave saying that that Josh Dobbs fumble was an incomplete pass and not a fumble. But it is what it is. But listen, what I like to say is fuck that list. The Tennessee Titans has n- have never, ever gotten love from the national media. This is our 25th year in the league. You can count on one hand how many times the national media has picked us to be there at the end of the year. And we never so, win when they do. <laughs> exactly. So it's bulletin board material. Um, I'm a big believer in I can care less what anyone says about me personally or about who my friends are or who my team is. That's got Your opinion's got nothing to do with the end result. So I think they'll use it as bulletin board material. And I think by the end of the year, you know, obviously we're a little biased, but there will be a lot of analysts, whatever, not only shocked that we win the division, but shocked that we finish as a top three seed in the AFC as well. Ooh, Listen, three I got seeds. one thing for Duval County, and I'm going to get nice up and close and personal for them. One thing for Duval County, we're coming back for the South. That's all I got to say about that. Yeah, back up a little. Your pervy we're mustache. Coming, we're coming, out. We're coming yeah. back for the South. If we stay away at least 100 yards no, away from all elementary clip school. That, Sammy. That. Do not clip that. <laughs> we're coming for the South. All right. That's all we need. We already, we, we already have – Jag fans chomping at the bits. Every Give it time. to me. We're coming for the South. Yeah. Well, you know what? I hope we do. Uh, but, you know, uh, these Jag Titan games this year are going to be a little Love bit that. different. Okay. It's going to be a little. Just prepare yourself, folks. This ain't the 99 yard touchdown game anymore. Okay. This is going to be an all out war from now until Trevor Lawrence hangs it up because he's the real deal. He's getting better every year. And he's a franchise guy. And until we have our franchise guy, which hopefully we do, and we'll find out sooner or later if we do, uh, but the Jags are here to stay. And uh, they're not a joke anymore. And we can't they're – not, they're not our, our stepbrothers anymore, okay? Um, they're our brothers. They're our twin brothers right now. And we need to – we have a chance to become their big brother again. But we're not going to act as if they are until we prove it because we haven't yeah, proven they're, anything. They're like a pesky middle child. You know, they won't – they won't go away. They think they got Big Brother's number because they beat us once. But um, I think when it comes down to it, we'll we'll, we'll be back where we where we belong. Yep. All right, we're, we're we're done with the Jags talk now. Right. Hmm. We're, we're we're on with the Saints. Okay. Because we're going to New Orleans. What what position do you think uh, scares you guys for the Saints that we have to contain the most? Obviously, that Camara's out. And who do you think is going to step up big and have a big game for us on our end? Uh, I think it's going to be Fulton. Uh, he's going to have his hands full of Olave, assuming they you know, play a lot of man. If they do, that's going to be his assignment. Uh, he's the real deal. He really, really is. And, <laughs> and he had a stellar rookie season, yeah. underutilized, which is crazy. But they really didn't even use him as much as they should have. Uh, and I think Derek Carr is going to have a field day with him. And, uh, you know, he, he's going to help him out a little bit and make him look pretty damn good. So that's the number one guy we need to look at. Um, keeping him contained uh, so that way our, our linebackers can do their job, stop the run, and uh, keep those points off the board. But I think Fulton's going to show up, uh, and I think he's going to not shut down Olave, but I think he's going to contain him, uh, and I think that's all we're going to need to do. Yeah, I think our offensive line is going to have their hands full week one, unfortunately. Not only because I think the Saints D-line is going to be um, a problem all year for the teams that they play. They have Cam Jordan. They have that nose tackle that Jared talked about that they brought over. And um, I'm a big believer um, in a defensive line, and they have a good one. And our offensive line, although it is retooled, we really don't have any continuity together yet. And although I think by the end of the year, hopefully a lot sooner than then, We'll be playing the way we think we could play on that, off, on that offensive line as a unit together, strong, but there could be some growing pains going forward. And I think them being in New Orleans at home, I've had friends who have been there, that place shakes. Um, and I think them playing there is an advantage. And I think our offensive line not having played together yet and their defensive line being 
you know, a problem um, is, is going to be our biggest task going forward. Uh, week one, I'm not all that scared with their weapons. Olave is good. Michael Thomas hasn't played in three years. Jawan Johnson is good, but they're without Kamara. Um, Jamal Williams scored 17 touchdowns last year, but who knows if he's a true feature back. They have another running back who they drafted in the third round. So yeah, that many? Whew. Yeah. So I know because of my one league, uh, me and my brother share a team. It's an auction league. We got him for $1. Wow. Um, yeah. So he scored 17 touchdowns last year. He is good. He has a knack for the end zone. But at the end of the day, I most fear their defensive line, not only because I think it's a strong point for their team, but I think our offensive line right now is one of the weaker points of our team. I'll tell you what. I, I mean, you guys, you know, hit some, made some good points. But the thing that scares me the most, and you guys can call me crazy, is Derek Carr because he has had our number, like I said earlier in the podcast, for the past couple of years when he was with Oakland and Las Vegas. He worked with Dennis Kelly. I mean, um, Dennis Allen when when he was a head coach with uh, the Raiders. And then we, we've seen what the what the Saints offense is um, generally right now because we played them a couple of years ago or even last year, didn't we? Or two years ago we played them. So yeah. we know we know what their offense is basically. But now they're gonna you know they're gonna change it because car is coming. So they're gonna implement some of the stuff that Carr has done well in Oakland. So now with a better quarterback, I think with Derek Carr than um, Jameis Winston or or whoever, Trevor Simeon, who the last time we played him was, with weapons like Alave and a healthy Michael Thomas and, and Juwan Johnson. It is pretty scary. He'll never be healthy the rest of his I, career. I, I, I understand probably, that, but he's, he's probably, still out there week one. He's not on the injury report. He's there. percent maybe at best of the player he was in his prime, who he was also playing with one of the best passers of all time, one of the best yeah. quarterbacks of our generation in Drew Brees. So until Michael Thomas proves to me that he's the player he used I'm to sure be. I hope he doesn't do it to, on when, Sunday. When he broke the uh, receiving, you know, receptions record in a year, I am not worried about him on, on, on the offensive side of the ball. Well, we'll see. We There has not a lot been uh, injury reports on him at all um, this offseason, so it's it's been very quiet on his end. I, I believe I'm not a Saints guy, so what I've been seeing – but Derek Carr, man, he definitely can light up the scoreboard and light us up. I'm not saying they're going to put 30 on us, but you know we we've had our predictions, but our, our predictions can stay the way they are, or or, or they can they can sneak up a couple touchdowns. So uh, we just got to be able to pass rush him and, and make him move, which I think we will. Okay, with our rotation at pass rush and our defensive line, um, their their offensive line has Ryan Ramchak. Uh, Ramchak, I think he's the the tackle over there. That's really it. I don't see anybody else on that line that scares me much. So I think we're going to have pressure in his face all damn day. Uh, and that's how we're going to win this game because you talked about our defensive line. I talked about their defensive line. Whoever wins that turnover battle, whoever forces the other team to turn the ball over is going to win this game. It happens more often than not in football in general, but especially a game like this where both teams seem so evenly matched, you feel as though whoever makes the least amount of mistakes is probably going to win this game. So if we could take the ball away from them, a few times, um, I think we'll be victorious, and vice versa. If we make mistakes and they take the ball away from us, they'll probably beat us. This is a very evenly matched game where the margin for error is minuscule, and I think whoever wins that turnover battle not only wins most NFL games, obviously, but especially in a game like this where teams are very evenly matched, whoever wins that turnover battle. Like that Super Bowl, the Eagles only had one turnover, and the uh, Chiefs won the game. So when a game is very evenly matched, it seems as though nine times out of ten, whoever wins the turnover battle wins the game. So yeah. we'll see who can cause more problems for who. But I'm hoping that um, you know, we're causing the issues for them and not vice versa. Yeah, absolutely. So um listen, like I said, it, it especially the Titans. I, I think honestly, I think the Titans have had more or less kind of some success and some not. I think we're kind of like right down the middle with Derek Carr. I I remember I went to the game that we opened up against the Raiders. That was the one time me and my my dad went to Nashville. Same. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You were there too. Yeah, they didn't play well. Um, and then uh, obviously we lost in Vegas or Oakland when Ryan Tannehill made that tackle on that interception. Um, no, we won that. Oh, no, we won that game. That's we right. Won we won that, that game. game. We blew them out. Yeah, and then we beat so, and then we beat them at home. So I think we kind of we kind of have Derek Carr's number, actually, to be honest. Um, but uh, we'll see. He's still a very competent player, and he's 
got plenty of uh, weapons. So we'll, I think we'll, he's similar to a Tannehill. When he yeah. has the weapons around him and time to throw, he's a good quarterback. He's not. Necessarily- I mean, like any any quarterback in the NFL. Exactly. So you know, he's not necessarily going to go out there and put the team on his back and win you a game. But I think when he has adequate weapons around him, he's you know he's just as good as anybody else. Yeah, absolutely. You absolutely. know what I wanted to ask you guys? Um, they released team captains. Um, I think it was earlier today. And obviously you have Kevin Byer, you have Jeffrey Simmons, you have Derrick Henry, you have Brian Tannehill, you know, you have Morgan Cox, who's a special teams guy. But the thing that brought to my attention was first year guy Al Shair coming in and being elected as captain. How, what do you think that says for a guy like that on our defense who hasn't played a down of football for the Tennessee Titans yet as selected captain? Yeah, I, mean, I think it only speaks to not to cut you off, Sal. Yeah. Sorry, I only. I only think that speaks volumes to what Rand Carthon thinks about Aziz Al Shair. I think that not only did he think he was a hell of a player in San Fran while he was there in the front office, I think that he thought he could also be a leader on a team that lacks a little bit of that, you know, leadership quality, especially in that position group where you're going to be playing, you know, outside linebacker. Obviously, Simmons is a stud, Byers an anchor, but that inside linebacker, outside linebacker position, maybe he felt as though not only could um, Aziz Al Shair be a difference maker play wise, but also with his leadership. So I think that only speaks to Rand Carthon thinking very highly of Aziz Al Shair as a player, but also as a leader as well. And I have no issues with that. I'm not going to come here and say that I know the the um the personality of any one player on the team and believe one player should be a captain more than another. So I have full confidence the players that were named captains of this team are the leaders of this team. Aziz Al Shahir being a captain his first year on this team only speaks volumes as to what Rand Carthon thinks of him as a player and as a person. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's move on to uh a segment we haven't done in a long, long time, and I can't say uh, I'm very happy that we're back to doing it because it's a very fun part of the, this time of year. Um, our picks of the week, as we always do, we're going to give our three picks, one of which being what we would consider a lock of the week, and we will be able to show you if you bundled all of ours together what that would look like, and we'll keep track throughout the year and see uh, what our knowledge has been doing for us. Don't have any expectations for myself like every year, but maybe we'll turn it around this year. Um, <laughs> but, Jarrett, why don't you start us off? Give us your three picks of the week. All right, so my sick picks for this week is I'm riding with the Titans plus three. Uh, I think, like I said, there's no explanation for us. We, we talked about it the whole whole way. I think we're, we are the better <laughs> yeah. team. I think we are the better team. Everybody says that, but you know what? I'm riding with my Titans plus three. I think they're going to win outright, but take the three points. The Commanders, I think they're going to go all over the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals are a joke right now. Even with Josh Dobbs, they got nothing going for them right now. And uh, my lock of the week would be the Minnesota Vikings minus six against, I think, the worst team in the NFL. That's the Buccaneers. So that's what I'm going with. Mm-hmm. I like that, man. Uh, we'll see when uh... – Sammy throws them up, but I also love the Titans plus three. I also think we can win that game outright. I also see that being a game where worst case, I see it as a push. I think Vegas might have a good read on this game. It's two evenly matched teams. If they beat us either way, I don't see it being a a blowout, a one possession game, Um, but I do believe we will win and we will win outright. So, Take the Titans with the three points. And then the Detroit Lions plus five and a half tomorrow night. I love, love them. It. I love it. I, I, I think that they are obviously a lot of a lot of us, a lot of casual NFL fans think highly of them this year. They finished last year strong. Dan Campbell seems like he has a bit of Rabel in his school of coaching. Um, his players love him. I feel like they run through a wall for them. Um, and then Kansas City just seems a little banged up. I don't think Kelsey plays week one. Christian Jones, is he going to play? I don't know. But I think it's going to be a high-scoring game, and I don't see either team winning by more than a touchdown. I think Detroit can win this game outright. Um, Usually I'm not a fan of betting against Patrick Mahomes, but without Travis Kelsey, we'll see how this offense moves. Take the Lions plus the points. And then my lock of the week, this Pittsburgh Steelers at home against the San Francisco 49ers. I love nothing more than an East Coast team 
getting points against the West Coast team traveling east. This is a game I'm also a fan of before I go forward. I'm also a fan of when the public is all over one team, which in this game, I think 80 80, 89% of the money is on the Niners. You go the opposite way. All those big buildings in Vegas aren't there because the public wins. They're there because the public loses. I think everyone and their mother is going to be all over San Fran. Nick Bosa got this big deal. Um, you know, they're 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 a year removed from almost going to the Super Bowl. Pittsburgh's got all these questions. Can he pick yada yada? Tough division. This is a game where I think Pittsburgh keeps it close. It's going to be an ugly game. I think they win this game outright. I love the Steelers plus two and a half. That is my lock of the week. All righty. So I not touching the Titan game with a ten foot hole, <laughs> uh, just for you know my sanity, and I'll think it's my fault if they lose. So I'm not doing that. Uh, first things first. I'm going to go with the Eagles um, minus three against New England. I think it just went to four since I submitted it. But unfortunately, um, I'm I'm locked in at minus three. I, I can't believe that the defending NFC champions are only giving three points to a team that won like seven games last year. It's shocking to me. I don't know what it is. I should, probably should have made it my lock, but I didn't. Uh, second game of the week is 49ers minus two and a half against the Steelers. Kind of to mirror what um, Vin said, you know, Pittsburgh needs to pump the brakes a little bit. I think we're getting a little too crazy now. Uh, you know, thinking that they're going to keep it close against a team that is pound for pound, probably one of the best teams in the league. And my lock of the week is the Bears minus one at home to the Packers. I think the Packers are going to be a little bit better than most people think, but to have them, you know, come to Chicago uh, with all the excitement around this season for the Bears fans, um, you know, adding the pieces they did, and they're going to beat, uh, you know, the Bears on the road with a first start of his career, uh, Jordan Love. I think it's a tall task. So that's been my lock of the week. Um, moving on, our last segment of the day, we're going to talk about uh, our score predictions for this week's matchup with the Saints. Jarrett, start us off. What's our final score uh, once this final whistle is on Sunday? I have us winning. As we all, it was close. 24-16, yep. I have us beating the New Orleans Saints. Yeah, it seems as if uh, we all think we're going to score 24 points. Jared's got that weird number out there, 16. Um, you know, pretty much we all think the same thing. We think it's going to be a one-possession game where probably whoever wins the turnover battle will win this game. I, um, my tune has changed since we made our season predictions with the whole um, calendar, but I believe this team now has D-Hop. Uh, I think we are going to be much better than people think we are, and I think we handle the Saints by a touchdown week one. All righty, folks. Um, actually, uh, did we show the graphic, uh, Sammy, as far as if we bundled all of our locks a week, what they're looking like? Let's show that real quick. That's a nice little pretty penny there, plus 581. Uh, we do not guarantee any of these bets. Make sure you know that, of course, uh, especially if there's uh, an SAL next to it. That's never a good sign either. So, uh, but Sal start stands for Sal always loses. Sal always loses. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, yeah, take that for what you'd like. Those are our locks of the week. Parlay Pat. Put 100 down, you'll make 681. Not too bad. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for today, folks. Before we leave, I got some pretty big news. We were going to do this last week. Unfortunately, some technical difficulty kept us from doing it, but we're going to be doing an even more awesome time. We're going to be partnering with Bleacher Report for a live post game show on their app. So make sure you look out for that uh, after the final whistle. Uh, we'll be going live on the Leecher Report, and we hope to have a nice little relationship with them moving forward, and we thank them for the opportunity. So uh, we're looking forward to doing that. Uh, and then, of course, we'll have our post-game show as well um, starting next week on our normal time, and we're going to go live with it, give you guys opportunities to vent to us, ask us questions. Um, and, you know, we're, Take we're your frustration out too. Absolutely, absolutely. Is it, or, or, or your happiness and celebration. Let's hope that happens more often than the other one. But uh, thanks again, guys, for joining us. Uh, we're so, so excited to kick off this new season of football and this new season of Sick Podcast Talking Titans. 
Uh, we can't wait to have some great guests on throughout the year. And, uh, you know, we're ready to go and we're ready to have you along for the ride. So uh, I hope all of you have a great night, a great day, and a great week. And as always, tighten up. Sammy, send me out. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast, Talking Titans, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.